Stewart was set up to march, and what he got was a fight because the Union cavalry commanded by Alfred Pleasanton crossed the Rappahannock at two different fords and really gave Stuart all that he could want in the way of a battle. Stuart was, was able to maintain his position at a place called Brandy Station. But Brandy Station on June 9th placed Stuart under a cloud. Uh, the Richmond papers really got on his case quite badly and accused him of spending too much time in the, the, the showboating and the pageantry of war and too little time getting ready to fight. So Stuart, on June 9th, 1863, suffered what uh, was really a coming of age of the Northern Cavalry. The first time they were able to fight essentially as equals. Part of the story of the battle is Stuart's zeal to ride around another Yankee army. He had begun his uh, ascent to fame by riding around George McClellan's army back in 1862 on the Virginia, Virginia Peninsula. And in this case, he wanted to ride around Joseph Hooker's Army of the Potomac. And he did. He secured Lee's permission to do essentially what he thought best. And what he thought best was to get between Hooker and Washington as Hooker started north, north to encounter the Confederates who were already in Pennsylvania. In the process, though, Stuart was able to capture a major wagon train headed to supply Hooker's army. He attacked 200 wagons and captured 150 of them. But this, of course, slowed him down. And Stuart did something really rare for Stuart. He got lost. And he lost contact with two, two very, very large armies in a relatively small portion of South Central Pennsylvania. And so he was very little help to Lee, uh, and only contributed to the battle on the third day. He didn't arrive until the afternoon of the second day. Longstreet Lee called his old war horse. And Longstreet was a capable lieutenant for Lee. Interestingly enough, the various times that he tries to be an independent commander sent on missions in which he is in charge, Longstreet doesn't perform quite so well. In this case, during the spring of 1863, Longstreet was down in southeastern Virginia near the town of Suffolk, attempting to lay siege to Suffolk and to confront an enemy uh, presence in southeastern Virginia. But Longstreet keeps asking Lee, Lee what should I do in letters that sound almost plaintive after a while. Lee keeps responding, do what you think best, but do it decisively, which is Lee's leadership style. Lee suggests, he doesn't command very often, he wants to lead out of consensus. He wants people to recognize that he knows best and also recognize that he is the commanding general. And this works oftentimes. It certainly worked with Jackson. It usually worked with Longstreet. Longstreet was quite willing to play a supporting role. He was quite happy and gratified to have a, a voice that uh, Lee heard and took notice of. Longstreet really didn't talk to Lee a great deal in person until the eve of the battle. Uh, he brought his army up from, from Suffolk through Richmond, had a conversation with Jefferson Davis in which he offered to lead an invasion of the Midwest and that that be the principal uh, campaign in the early summer of 63. Uh, by this time, Davis had agreed to Lee's invasion of Pennsylvania and so Longstreet was essentially patted on the head and told to go uh, join Lee with his corps, and he did. 